asking me how I ended up about a year ago publishing my first YouTube video where I explained how I reversed my hair loss and of course what kind of supplements and medicines I was using and what I did. What's up guys, my name is Philippe. If you're new to my channel, about five years ago, I realized that I was suffering from hair loss, AKA male pattern baldness, AKA androgen alopecia. Now, as you can see, it was really bad at my point. And at some point I managed to reverse it and regain a lot of hair. And of course, at that point, a lot of my friends started asking me how I ended up about a year ago, publishing my first YouTube video where I explained how I reversed my hair loss and of course what kind of supplements and medicines I was using and what I did. Now this is one year later and it's about 100,000 views since then and I'm super thrilled about all the support I've gotten and I wanted to make this video about the basics on hair loss to all the new subscribers since I've gotten a lot of following and I wanted to just cover the basics once again. So what is androgen alopecia? Androgen alopecia means male gene hair loss. Now this means in 90% of all cases of hair loss in men, it is from the androgen, the male gene. So what is this? Well, first off, we have something called hormones in our body. Of course, you know that. Some of the hormones, mainly testosterone, has an androgen ratio or androgen potency, and this is what causing the hair loss in men. This is why we call it male pattern baldness because mostly men get it because we have testosterone. Now, testosterone isn't really the big bad culprit in this case. The real bad boy in this case is DHT. DHT means dihydrotestosterone and it is made from testosterone. This is why men mostly suffer from this case of hair loss. While, while testosterone has an androgen weight and will cause some very few cases a little hair loss, DHT is about 13 times as strong as testosterone in causing hair loss. So far, most scientists don't even know why DHT is causing hair loss. But at this point, most of us know that DHT is responsible for making the hair grow worse and worse or the follicle will shrink at this point to a point where it doesn't grow a hair at any point any longer. So we want to stop the androgens from doing that to our hair follicles. This is where most of the medical supplements come in play. The first one we have is the FDA approved finasteride that we most of you might know about. To explain how finasteride works, you gotta know how the androgens work in your hair follicles. Imagine this, you have a lock and you have a key. The lock is your androgen receptor. Those are placed in your hair follicles and the key is whatever hormone is having that effect. Now, for the hormone to do its job, the key has to fit a lock, of course go into the lock and then turn and it will do its thing. Imagine it works like that. Now, DHT is really good at turning that lock that makes your hair fall out. This is of course what we don't want it to do. So we have several options. Namely finasteride, the first one is when we make DHT from testosterone. Imagine a locksmith is doing your key or is making your key or whatever you call it. And while he is making the key, we already have the materials, but we need the locksmith. Now the locksmith we can call 5-alpha reductase enzyme. That is our locksmith. He is going to take our testosterone and make a new key called dihydrotestosterone. It's dihydrotestosterone that is the real problem in most cases for most men. So one of the main things we can do is that we can remove some of the locksmiths in our body so we don't produce DHT. This is what finasteride does. It removes the locksmith, aka 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Hence, we cannot make any more keys and then we cannot turn so many locks in our body. This is one of the first ways that you can stop your hair loss or at least try and reverse it. This is the only FDA approved drug that is for stopping DHC in your body. Now, the next thing we have is what's called research chemicals. Research chemicals isn't FDA approved, but most underground users use them still. And I use some of them and I have tried a lot of them 
And one of the more popular things out there is RU58841. So RU58841, it's what's called an androgen antagonist. Now, while finasteride was removing the locksmith from the whole equation, so we cannot make DHT, we instead, we remove, or we don't remove, but we actually imagine that when we have the lock and we have DHT, that's the key, we stick glue in the lock, so the key won't work. This is what an antagonist does, it blocks the receptor. So in that way, there's different ways to stop the androgens from doing their work in your body. Some people respond better to some of the other options, some use both, some use more, and there's different kind of ways to go about this problem. As I was saying, imagine RU58841 is going to block the lock. The main benefit here is that there is a, there's a reason why we are producing DHT. And some of the guys out on the internet is concerned that when we block the locksmiths from making DHT, we need the keys in the rest of our body. This is why some people are talking about post finasteride syndrome, which some are scared of. And there's a lot of rumors going on on the internet and some are explaining some bad stuff that happened after and I won't get into that. If you want to know more about that, I have a series called Do We Really Need DHT in my channel. You can watch them. I link to them up here. But let's just keep to the basics in here. Imagine you don't want to remove DHT from your whole body, but you wanted to do its thing in the rest of the body. Well, then RU58841 is a good option for you. Because RU58841 is a topical solution. So what you do there is that you actually put it on your scalp and it will more or less only work in the area where you applied it. Meaning that it will block DHT only in your hair follicles where you want them not to work and they will work in the rest of the body. This is why it's called a topical solution. So finasteride on the other hand is a pill. So then the pill you take and when you take finasteride it goes systemical. Systemical is when it works in the whole body, meaning that you eat the pill and it's stopping the locksmiths, aka 5-alpha reductase, from producing more DHC in the whole body. So these are the basic two options that you have. What I have done a lot of times is that I have both used finasteride to stop my androgens from being produced and then I have also applied IU58841 to my scalp meaning I have reduced the keys that are available in my scalp and also I have put, let's say, glue in every lock or more or less because you cannot put glue in. Let's just keep the metaphor going. You cannot put glue on all the locks. That's not how it works. It's more like a shotgun theory that you shoot wide and blast and hope you hit everything. But you will miss something. That's always how it works. And like finasteride cannot erase all the DHT. IU58841 cannot block all the locks from being active. So when people use both of them, you have a way higher chance of either regaining your hair, as I've been lucky and did, or otherwise you can at least stop hold something with your hair loss. And some even had some really great and crazy results. So guys, this is just the basics on hair loss and how it works. So to sum it up, we produce DHT from testosterone. DHT is what makes us lose our hair. We can stop this from happening by either removing DHT from our body or blocking what DHT wants to work on. Now I have a ton of other videos on these subjects. So if you're more interested in this stuff, I highly recommend that you just search around on my channel. It's more or less only about hair loss and guys, these things don't work the same way for each person. Now I've been lucky, I have some setbacks. This is also why I made this channel to share this stuff with you guys. So some of you with all your questions can have some help. And guys, just watch some of the videos. And if you have some questions, just ask them below. I'll try and answer as many as I can. And if there's some good questions in there, I will make a topic on them. And with that said guys, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, cheers.